Jamaica listen, is an island country situated in the Caribbean Sea. Spanning 10,990 square kilometers 4, square miles in area, it is the third largest island of the Greater Antilles and the fourth largest island country in the Caribbean. Jamaica lies about 145 kilometers 90 miles south of Cuba and 191 kilometers 119 miles west of Hispaniola the island containing the countries of Haiti and the Dominican Republic Previously inhabited by the indigenous Arawak and Taino peoples the island came under Spanish rule following the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1494 Many of the indigenous people died of disease, and the Spanish transplanted African slaves to Jamaica as laborers. The island remained a possession of Spain until 1655, when England later Great Britain conquered it and renamed it Jamaica. Under British colonial rule Jamaica became a leading sugar exporter, with its plantation economy highly dependent on African slaves. The British fully emancipated all slaves in 1838, and many freedmen chose to have subsistence farms rather than to work on plantations. Beginning in the 1840s, the British utilized Chinese and Indian indentured labor to work on plantations. The island achieved independence from the United Kingdom on 6 August 1962. With 2.9 million people, Jamaica is the third most populous Anglophone country in the Americas after the United States and Canada, and the fourth most populous country in the Caribbean. Kingston is the country's capital and largest city, with a population of 937,700. Jamaicans mainly have African ancestry, with significant European, Chinese, Indian, Lebanese, and mixed-race minorities. Due to a high rate of emigration for work since the 1960s, Jamaica has a large diaspora around the world, particularly in Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Jamaica is a Commonwealth realm, with Queen Elizabeth II as its monarch and head of state. Her appointed representative in the country is the Governor-General of Jamaica, an office held by Sir Patrick Allen since 2009. Andrew Hulness has served as the head of government and prime minister of Jamaica from March 2016. Jamaica is a parliamentary constitutional monarchy with legislative power vested in the bicameral parliament of Jamaica, consisting of an appointed Senate and a directly elected House of Representatives. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The indigenous people, the Taino, called the island Zymaka in Arawakan, meaning the land of wood and water, or the land of springs. Colloquially Jamaicans refer to their home island as the rock, slang names such as jamrock, jamdown, jamding, in Jamaican patois, or briefly, ya, have derived from this. Topic History Topic Prehistory The Arawak and Taino indigenous people, originating in South America, settled on the island between 4000 and 1000 BC. When Christopher Columbus arrived in 1494, there were more than 200 villages ruled by caciques, chiefs of villages. The south coast of Jamaica was the most populated, especially around the area now known as Old Harbor. The Taino still inhabited Jamaica when the English took control of the island in 1655. The Jamaican National Heritage Trust is attempting to locate and document any evidence of the Taino, Arawak. Topic. Spanish rule 1509 Christopher Columbus claimed Jamaica for Spain after landing there in 1494. His probable landing point was Dry Harbor, called Discovery Bay, and St. Anne's Bay was named St. Gloria by Columbus, as the first sighting of the land. 
one and a half kilometers west of St. Anne's Bay is the site of the first Spanish settlement on the island, Sevilla, which was established in 1509 and abandoned around 1524 because it was deemed unhealthy. The capital was moved to Spanish town, then called St. Jago de la Vega, around 1534 at present-day St. Catherine. Topic. British rule 1655 to 1962. Spanish town has the oldest cathedral of the British colonies in the Caribbean. The Spanish were forcibly evicted by the English at Ocho Rios in St. Anne. In the 1655 invasion of Jamaica, the English, led by Sir William Penn and General Robert Venables, took over the last Spanish fort on the island. The name of Montego Bay, the capital of the parish of St. James, was derived from the Spanish name Manteca Bahia or Bay of Lard, alluding to the lard making industry based on processing the numerous boars in the area. In 1660, the population of Jamaica was about 4,500 white and 1,500 black. By the early 1670s, as the English developed sugar cane plantations and imported more slaves, black people formed a majority of the population. The colony was shaken and almost destroyed by the 1692 Jamaica earthquake. The Irish in Jamaica also formed a large part of the island's early population, making up two-thirds of the white population on the island in the late 17th century, twice that of the English population. They were brought in as indentured laborers and soldiers after the conquest of Jamaica by Cromwell's forces in 1655. The majority of Irish were transported by force as political prisoners of war from Ireland as a result of the ongoing wars of the three kingdoms at the time. Migration of large numbers of Irish to the island continued into the 18th century. Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492 and then forcibly converted to Christianity in Portugal, during a period of persecution by the Inquisition. Some Spanish and Portuguese Jewish refugees went to the Netherlands and England, and from there to Jamaica. Others were part of the Iberian colonization of the New World, after overtly converting to Catholicism, as only Catholics were allowed in the Spanish colonies. By 1660, Jamaica had become a refuge for Jews in the New World, also attracting those who had been expelled from Spain and Portugal. An early group of Jews arrived in 1510, soon after the son of Christopher Columbus settled on the island. Primarily working as merchants and traders, the Jewish community was forced to live a clandestine life, calling themselves Portugals. After the British took over rule of Jamaica, the Jews decided the best defense against Spain's regaining control was to encourage making the colony a base for Caribbean pirates. With the pirates installed in Port Royal, which became the largest city in the Caribbean, the Spanish would be deterred from attacking. The British leaders agreed with the viability of this strategy to forestall outside aggression. When the English captured Jamaica in 1655, the Spanish colonists fled after freeing their slaves. The slaves dispersed into the mountains, joining the Maroons, those who had previously escaped to live with the Taino native people. During the centuries of slavery, Maroons established free communities in the mountainous interior of Jamaica, where they maintained their freedom and independence for generations. The Jamaican Maroons fought the British during the 18th century. Under treaties of 1738 and 1739, the British agreed to stop trying to round them up in exchange for their leaving the colonial settlements alone, but serving if needed for military actions. Some of the communities were broken up and the British deported Maroons to Nova Scotia and, later, Sierra Leone. The name is still used today by modern Maroon descendants, who have certain rights and autonomy at the community of Akampong. During its first 200 years of British rule, Jamaica became one of the world's leading sugar-exporting, slave-dependent colonies, producing more than 77,000 tons of sugar annually between 1820 and 1824. After the abolition of the international slave trade in 1807, the British began to import 
indentured servants to supplement the labor pool, as many freedmen resisted working on the plantations. Workers recruited from India began arriving in 1845, Chinese workers in 1854. Many South Asian and Chinese descendants continue to reside in Jamaica today. By the beginning of the 19th century, Jamaica's dependence on slave labor and a plantation economy had resulted in black people outnumbering white people by a ratio of almost 20 to 1. Although the UK had outlawed the importation of slaves, some were still smuggled in from Spanish colonies and directly. While planning the abolition of slavery, the British Parliament passed laws to improve conditions for slaves. They banned the use of whips in the field and flogging of women, informed planters that slaves were to be allowed religious instruction, and required a free day during each week when slaves could sell their produce, prohibiting Sunday markets to enable slaves to attend church. The House of Assembly in Jamaica resented and resisted the new laws. Members then restricted to European Jamaicans claimed that the slaves were content and objected to Parliament's interference in island affairs. Slave owners feared possible revolts if conditions were lightened. Following a series of rebellions on the island and changing attitudes in Great Britain, the British government formally abolished slavery by an 1833 act, beginning in 1834, with full emancipation from chattel slavery declared in 1838. The population in 1834 was 371,070, of whom 15,000 were white, 5,000 free black, 40,000 colored or free people of color mixed race, and 311,070 were slaves. In the 19th century, the British established a number of botanical gardens. These included the Castleton Botanical Gardens, developed in 1862 to replace the Bath Botanical Gardens created in 1779, which was subject to flooding. Bath Botanical Gardens was the site for planting breadfruit, brought to Jamaica from the Pacific by Captain William Bly. It became a staple in island diets. Other gardens were the Sinchona Plantation, founded in 1868, and the Hope Botanical Gardens founded in 1874. In 1872, Kingston was designated as the island's capital. In 1945, Sir Horace Hector Hearn became Chief Justice and Keeper of the Records in Jamaica. He headed the Supreme Court, Kingston between 1945 and 1950-1951. After Kenya achieved independence, its government appointed him as Chief Justice and he moved there. Independence Jamaica slowly gained increasing independence from the United Kingdom. In 1958, it became a province in the Federation of the West Indies, a federation among the British West Indies. Jamaica attained full independence by leaving the Federation in 1962. Strong economic growth, averaging approximately 6% per annum, marked the first 10 years of independence under conservative Jamaica Labour Party governments. They were led successively by Prime Ministers Alexander Bustamante, Donald Sangster, and Hugh Shearer. The growth was fueled by strong private investments in bauxite, alumina, tourism, the manufacturing industry and, to a lesser extent, the agricultural sector. The optimism of the first decade was accompanied by a growing sense of inequality among many Afro-Jamaicans, and a concern that the benefits of growth were not being shared by the urban poor. Combined with the effects of a slowdown in the global economy in 1970, the voters elected the PNP People's National Party in 1972. They tried to implement more socially equitable policies in education and health, but the economy suffered under their leadership. By 1980, Jamaica's gross national product had declined to some 25 percent below the 1972 level. Due to rising foreign and local debt, accompanied by large fiscal deficits, the government sought International Monetary Fund IMF financing from the United States and others. Economic deterioration continued into the mid-1980s, exacerbated by a number of factors. 
The first and third largest alumina producers, Alpart and Alcoa, closed, and there was a significant reduction in production by the second largest producer, Alcan. Reynolds Jamaica Mines, Ltd. left the Jamaican industry. There was also a decline in tourism, which was important to the economy. Independence, however widely celebrated in Jamaica, has been questioned in the early 21st century. In 2011, a survey showed that approximately 60% of Jamaicans believe that the country would be better off had it remained a British colony with only 17% believing it would be worse off, citing as problems years of social and fiscal mismanagement in the country. Topic. Government and politics Jamaica is a parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy, with Queen Elizabeth II serving as the Jamaican monarch. As Elizabeth II is shared as head of state of 15 other countries and resides mostly in the United Kingdom, she is thus often represented as Queen of Jamaica in Jamaica and abroad by the Governor General of Jamaica. The Governor General is nominated by the Prime Minister of Jamaica and the entire cabinet and then appointed by the monarch. All the members of the cabinet are appointed by the Governor General on the advice of the Prime Minister. The monarch and the governor-general serve largely ceremonial roles, apart from their reserve powers for use in certain constitutional crisis situations. Jamaica's current constitution was drafted in 1962 by a bipartisan joint committee of the Jamaican legislature. It came into force with the Jamaica Independence Act, 1962 of the United Kingdom Parliament, which gave Jamaica independence. The Parliament of Jamaica is bicameral, consisting of the House of Representatives lower house and the Senate upper house. Members of the House known as Members of Parliament or MPs are directly elected, and the Member of the House of Representatives who, in the Governor-General's best judgment, is best able to command the confidence of a majority of the members of that House, is appointed by the Governor-General to be the Prime Minister. Senators are nominated jointly by the Prime Minister and the Parliamentary Leader of the Opposition and are then appointed by the Governor-General. <laughs> Political parties and elections Jamaica has traditionally had a two-party system, with power often alternating between the People's National Party PNP and Jamaica Labour Party JLP. The party with current administrative and legislative power is the Jamaica Labour Party, with a one-seat parliamentary majority as of 2016. There are also several minor parties who have yet to gain a seat in parliament, the largest of these is the National Democratic Movement NDM. Topic administrative divisions Jamaica is divided into 14 parishes, which are grouped into three historic counties that have no administrative relevance. In the context of local government the parishes are designated local authorities, these local authorities are further styled as municipal corporations, which are either city municipalities or town municipalities. Any new city municipality must have a population of at least 50,000, and a town municipality a number set by the Minister of Local Government. There are currently no town municipalities. The local governments of the parishes of Kingston and St. Andrews are consolidated as the City Municipality of Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. The newest city municipality created is the Municipality of Portmore in 2003. While it is geographically located within the parish of St. Catherine, it is governed independently. Topic. Military. The Jamaica Defense Force JDF, is the small but professional military force of Jamaica. The JDF is based on the British military model with similar organization, training, weapons and traditions. Once chosen, officer candidates are sent to one of several British or Canadian basic officer courses depending on the arm of service. Enlisted soldiers are given basic training at Up Park Camp or JDF Training Depot, Newcastle, both in St. Andrew. 
As with the British model, NCOs are given several levels of professional training as they rise up the ranks. Additional military schools are available for speciality training in Canada, the United States and the United Kingdom. The JDF is directly descended from the British Army's West India Regiment formed during the colonial era. The West India Regiment was used extensively by the British Empire in policing the Empire from 1795 to 1926. Other units in the JDF heritage include the early colonial Jamaica Militia, the Kingston Infantry Volunteers of World War I and reorganised into the Jamaican Infantry Volunteers in World War II. The West Indies Regiment was reformed in 1958 as part of the West Indies Federation. After dissolution of the Federation, the JDF was established. The Jamaica Defence Force (JDF) comprises an infantry regiment and reserve corps, an air wing, a coast guard fleet, and a supporting engineering unit. The infantry regiment contains the first, second, and third National Reserve battalions. The JDF Air Wing is divided into three flight units, a training unit, a support unit and the JDF Air Wing National Reserve. The Coast Guard is divided between seagoing crews and support crews who conduct maritime safety and maritime law enforcement as well as defense-related operations. The role of the support battalion is to provide support to boost numbers in combat and issue competency training in order to allow for the readiness of the force. The 1st Engineer Regiment was formed due to an increased demand for military engineers and their role is to provide engineering services whenever and wherever they are needed. The headquarters JDF contains the JDF Commander, Command Staff as well as Intelligence, Judge Advocate Office, Administrative and Procurement Sections. In recent years the JDF has been called on to assist the nation's police, the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF, in fighting drug smuggling and a rising crime rate which includes one of the highest murder rates in the world. JDF units actively conduct armed patrols with the JCF in high crime areas and known gang neighborhoods. There has been vocal controversy as well as support of this JDF role. In early 2005, an opposition leader, Edward Sega, called for the merger of the JDF and JCF. This has not garnered support in either organization nor among the majority of citizens. Topic. Geography and environment Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean. It lies between latitudes 17 degrees and 19 degrees north, and longitude 76 degrees and 79 degrees west. Mountains, including the Blue Mountains, dominate the inland. They are surrounded by a narrow coastal plain. Jamaica only has two cities, the first being Kingston, the capital city and center of business, located on the south coast and the second city being Montego Bay, one of the best-known cities in the Caribbean for tourism, located on the north coast. Other towns include Portmore, Spanish Town, Mandeville and the resort towns of Ocho Rios, Port Antonio and Negril. Kingston Harbor is the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, which contributed to the city being designated as the capital in 1872. Tourist attractions include Dunn's River Falls in St. Anne, Y.S. Falls in St. Elizabeth, the Blue Lagoon in Portland, believed to be the crater of an extinct volcano. Port Royal was the site of a major earthquake in 1692 that helped form the island's palisados. The climate in Jamaica is tropical, with hot and humid weather, although higher inland regions are more temperate. Some regions on the south coast, such as the Liguania Plain and the Pedro Plains, are relatively dry rain shadow areas. Jamaica lies in the hurricane belt of the Atlantic Ocean, and because of this, the island sometimes suffers significant storm damage. Hurricanes Charlie and Gilbert hit Jamaica directly in 1951 and 1988, respectively, causing major damage and many deaths. In the 2000s decade, hurricanes Ivan, Dean, and Gustav also brought severe weather to the island. 
Among the variety of terrestrial, aquatic and marine ecosystems are dry and wet limestone forests, rainforest, riparian woodland, wetlands, caves, rivers, seagrass beds and coral reefs. The authorities have recognized the tremendous significance and potential of the environment and have designated some of the more fertile areas as protected. Among the island's protected areas are the Cockpit Country, Hellshire Hills, and Litchfield Forest Reserves. In 1992, Jamaica's first marine park, covering nearly 15 square kilometers (5.8 square miles), was established in Montego Bay. Portland Bight Protected Area was designated in 1999. The following year, Blue and John Crow Mountains National Park was created on roughly 300 square miles (780 square kilometers) of wilderness, which supports thousands of tree and fern species and rare animals. Topic. Flora and fauna Jamaica's climate is tropical, supporting diverse ecosystems with a wealth of plants and animals. Jamaica's plant life has changed considerably over the centuries. When the Spanish arrived in 1494, except for small agricultural clearings, the country was deeply forested. The European settlers cut down the great timber trees for building and ships' supplies, and cleared the plains, savannas, and mountain slopes for intense agricultural cultivation. Many new plants were introduced including sugarcane, bananas, and citrus trees. Areas of heavy rainfall contain stands of bamboo, ferns, ebony, mahogany, and rosewood. Cactus and similar dry area plants are found along the south and southwest coastal area. Parts of the west and southwest consist of large grasslands, with scattered stands of trees. The Jamaican animal life, typical of the Caribbean, includes highly diversified wildlife with many endemic species found nowhere else on Earth. As with other oceanic islands, land mammals are mostly bats. The only non-bat native mammal extant in Jamaica is the Jamaican huesha, locally known as the coney. Introduced mammals such as wild boar and the small Asian mongoose are also common. Jamaica is also home to about 50 species of reptiles, the largest of which is the American crocodile, however, it is only present within the Black River and a few other areas. Lizards such as anoles, iguanas and snakes such as racers and the Jamaican boa the largest snake on the island, are common in areas such as the cockpit country. None of Jamaica's eight species of native snakes is venomous. Jamaica is the indigenous home of two species of hummingbirds, the black-billed and red-billed streamertails. The red-billed streamertail, known locally as the Dr. Bird, is Jamaica's national symbol. One species of freshwater turtle is native to Jamaica, the Jamaican slider. It is found only on Jamaica, Cat Island, and a few other islands in the Bahamas. In addition, many types of frogs are common on the island, especially tree frogs. Birds are abundant, and make up the bulk of the endemic and native vertebrate species. Beautiful and exotic birds, such as the Jamaican toady and the doctor bird, the national bird, can be found among a large number of others. Jamaican waters contain considerable resources of fresh and saltwater fish. The chief varieties of saltwater fish are kingfish, jack, mackerel, whiting, bonito, and tuna. Fish that occasionally enter freshwater and estuarine environments include snook, jewfish, mangrove snapper, and mullets. Fish that spend the majority of their lives in Jamaica's fresh waters include many species of livebearers, killifish, freshwater gobies, the mountain mullet, and the American eel. Tilapia have been introduced from Africa for aquaculture, and are very common. Insects and other invertebrates are abundant, including the world's largest centipede, the Amazonian giant centipede, and the Homerus swallowtail, the Western Hemisphere's largest butterfly. Topic. Life below water Coral reef ecosystems are important because they provide people with a source of livelihood, food, recreation, and medicinal compounds and protect the land on which they live. 
Jamaica relies on the ocean and its ecosystem for its development. However the marine life in Jamaica is also being affected. There could be many factors that contribute to marine life not having the best health. Jamaica's geological origin, topographical features and seasonal high rainfall make it susceptible to a range of natural hazards that can affect the coastal and oceanic environments. These include storm surge, slope failures, landslides, earthquakes, floods and hurricanes. Coral reefs in the Negril Marine Park NMP, Jamaica, have been increasingly impacted by nutrient pollution and macroalgal blooms following decades of intensive development as a major tourist destination. Another one of those factors could include tourist, being that Jamaica is a very touristy place the island draws people to travel here from all over the world. The Jamaican tourism industry accounts for 32% of total employment and 36% of the country's GDP too, and is largely based on the sun, sea and sand, the last two of these attributes being dependent on healthy coral reef ecosystems. Because of Jamaica's tourism, they have developed a study to see if the tourist would be willing to help financially to manage their marine ecosystem because Jamaica alone is unable to. The ocean connects all the countries all over the world, however, everyone and everything is affecting the flow and life in the ocean. Jamaica is a very touristy place specifically because of their beaches. If their oceans are not functioning at their best then the well-being of Jamaica and the people who live there will start to deteriorate. According to the OECD, oceans contribute $1.5 trillion annually in value added to the overall economy. A developing country on an island will get the majority of their revenue from their ocean. Healthy oceans, coasts and freshwater ecosystems are crucial for economic growth and food production, but they are also fundamental to global efforts to mitigate climate change. Climate change also has an affect on the ocean and life within the ocean. Topic. Pollution. Pollution occurs everywhere in which could cause damage. Pollution comes from runoff, sewage systems, and garbage. However, this typically all ends up in the ocean after there is rain or floods. Everything that ends up in the water changes the quality and balance of the ocean. Poor coastal water quality has adversely affected fisheries, tourism and mariculture, as well as undermining biological sustainability of the living resources of ocean and coastal habitats. Jamaica imports and exports many goods through their waters. Some of the imports that go into Jamaica include petroleum and petroleum products. Issues include accidents at sea, risk of spills through local and international transport of petroleum and petroleum products. Oil spills can disrupt the marine life because the chemicals that are being spilled that should not be there. Oil and water do not mix. Unfortunately oil spills is not the only form of pollution that occurs in Jamaica. Solid waste disposal mechanisms in Jamaica are currently inadequate. The solid waste gets into the water through rainfall forces. Solid waste is also harmful to wildlife, particularly birds, fish and turtles that feed at the surface of the water and mistake floating debris for food. For example, plastic can be caught around birds and turtles' necks making it difficult to eat and breath as they begin to grow causing the plastic to get tighter around their necks. Pieces of plastic, metal, and glass can be mistaken for the food fish eat. Each Jamaican generates 1 kilogram two pounds of waste per day less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 only 70% of this is collected by National Solid Waste Management Authority NSWMA. Dot the remaining 30% is either burnt or disposed of in gullies, waterways. Topic. Policy There are policies that are being put into place to help preserve the ocean and the life below water. The goal of Integrated Coastal Zone Management ICZM, is to improve the quality of life of human communities who depend on coastal resources while maintaining the biological diversity and productivity of coastal ecosystems. 
Developing a underdeveloped country can impact the ocean's ecosystem because of all the construction that would be done to develop the country. Overbuilding, driven by powerful market forces as well as poverty among some sectors of the population, and destructive exploitation contribute to the decline of ocean and coastal resources. Developing practices that will contribute to the lives of the people but also to the life of the ocean and its ecosystem. Some of these practices include, develop sustainable fisheries practices, ensure sustainable mariculture techniques and practices, sustainable management of shipping, and promote sustainable tourism practices. As for tourism, tourism is the number one source of foreign exchange earnings in Jamaica and, as such is vital to the national economy. Tourists typically go to countries unaware of issues and how they impact those issues. Tourists are not going to be used to living in a different style compared to their own country. Practices such as, provide sewage treatment facilities for all tourist areas, determine carrying capacity of the environment prior to planning tourism activities, provide alternative types of tourist activities can help to get desired results such as the development of alternative tourism which will reduce the current pressure on resources that support traditional tourism activities. A study was conducted to see how tourists could help with sustainable financing for ocean and coastal management in Jamaica. Instead of using tourist fees they would call them environmental fees. This study aims to inform the relevant stakeholders of the feasibility of implementing environmental fees as well as the likely impact of such revenue-generating instruments on the current tourist visitation rates to the island. The development of a user fee system would help fund environmental management and protection. The results show that tourists have a high consumer surplus associated with a vacation in Jamaica, and have a significantly lower willingness to pay for a tourism tax when compared to an environmental tax. The findings of the study show that the label of the tax and as well as the respondents' awareness of the institutional mechanisms for environmental protection and tourism are important to their decision framework. Tourists are more willing to pay for environmental fees rather than tourist tax fees. A tax high enough to fund for environmental management and protection but low enough to continue to bring tourists to Jamaica. It has been shows that if an environmental tax of $1 per person were introduced it would not cause a significant decline in visitation rates and would generate revenues of $1.7 million. Demographics Ethnic origins The Jamaican national motto is out of many one people, based on the population's multiracial roots. The motto is represented on the coat of arms, showing a male and female member of the Taino Indian tribe standing on either side of a shield which bears a red cross with five golden pineapples. Most of Jamaica's population is of African or partially African descent, with many being able to trace their origins to the Western and Central African countries of Ghana and Cameroon, as well as Europe and Asia. Like many other Anglophone Caribbean countries, many Jamaicans with mixed ancestry self-report as black. The prominent black nationalist Marcus Garvey is possibly the most famous Jamaican who was of full African heritage. Other famous full African Jamaicans include the Maroons of Akampong and other settlements, who were the descendants of escaped slaves that introduced the jerk cooking technique to the world. Many Maroons continue to have their own traditions and speak their own language, known locally as Cromanty. It is extremely uncommon for Jamaicans to identify themselves by race as is prominent in countries like the United States where the race of a person is hyphenated with the ethnicity preceding the nationality, for example, the American usage of the terms, white American or African American. Due to its history, most Jamaicans describe their nationality as a race in and of itself where they identify as simply being Jamaican regardless of ethnicity. Asians form the second largest group and include Indo-Jamaicans and Chinese Jamaicans. Most are descended from indentured workers brought by the British colonial government to fill labor shortages following the abolition of slavery in 1838. 
Prominent Indian Jamaicans include jockey Sean Bridgmahan, who was the first Jamaican in the Kentucky Derby, and Miss Jamaica World and Miss Universe winner Yendi Phillips. The southwestern parish of Westmoreland is famous for its large population of Indo-Jamaicans, along with their Indian counterparts. Chinese Jamaicans have also played an integral part in Jamaica's community and history. Prominent descendants of this group include Canadian billionaire investor Michael Lee Chin, supermodels Naomi Campbell and Tyson Beckford, and VP Records founder Vincent Randy Chin. There are about 20,000 Jamaicans who have Lebanese ancestry. Notable Jamaicans from this group include former Jamaican Prime Minister Edward Sega and Jamaican politician and former Miss World Lisa Hanna. In 1835, Lord Seaford gave 500 acres of his 10,000-acre estate in Westmoreland for the Seaford Town German settlement. Today most of the town's descendants are of full or partial German descent. There is also a significant Portuguese Jamaican population that is predominantly of Sephardic Jewish heritage that is primarily located in the St. Elizabeth Parish in the southwestern part of Jamaica. Famous descendants include the dancehall artist Sean Paul, former record producer and founder of Island Records Chris Blackwell, and Jacob de Cordova, who was the founder of the Jamaica Gleaner newspaper. In recent years, immigration has increased, coming mainly from China, Haiti, Cuba, Colombia, and Latin America. 20,000 Latin Americans reside in Jamaica. The Jamaican government is currently considering making Spanish Jamaica's second official language. The move has been encouraged by Spain's Secretary for International Cooperation, Fernando Garcia Casas, who thinks that bilateral cooperation between his country and Jamaica could be greatly increased by encouraging greater use of the Spanish language there. About 7,000 Americans also reside in Jamaica. American fashion icon and philanthropist Ralph Lauren has been a resident of the island for almost 30 years. His estate, Round Hill Hotel and Villas, is a popular tourist destination and hotel, that was the location of American President John F. Kennedy's honeymoon after marrying his wife Jacqueline. It has also hosted several celebrities and politicians from around the world and has been the inspiration for many of his home and fashion collections, including the Spring 2018 collection that was officially presented at New York Fashion Week. Lauren's wife, Ricky, is also a popular socialite among locals who has written a book about the island entitled, My Home. There are also many first generation American, British, and Canadians of Jamaican descent. A study found that the average admixture on the island was 78.3% Sub Saharan African, 16.0% European, and 5.7% East Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Languages Jamaica is regarded as a bilingual country, with two major languages in use by the population. The official language is English, which is used in all domains of public life, including the government, the legal system, the media, and education. However, the primary spoken language is an English-based creole called Jamaican Patois or Patwa. A 2007 survey by the Jamaican Language Unit found that 17.1% of the population were monolingual in Jamaican Standard English JSE, 36.5% were monolingual in Patois, and 46.4% were bilingual, although earlier surveys had pointed to a greater degree of bilinguality up to 90%. The Jamaican education system has only recently begun to offer formal instruction in Patois, while retaining JSE as the official language of instruction. Additionally, some Jamaicans use one or more of Jamaican Sign Language JSL, American Sign Language ASL, or the indigenous Jamaican Country Sign Language Country Sign. Both JSL and ASL are rapidly replacing Country Sign for a variety of reasons. Topic. Emigration Many Jamaicans have emigrated to other countries, especially to the United Kingdom, the United States, and Canada. 
In the case of the United States, about 20,000 Jamaicans per year are granted permanent residence. The great number of Jamaicans living abroad has become known as the Jamaican diaspora. There has also been emigration of Jamaicans to Cuba. The scale of emigration has been widespread and similar to other Caribbean entities such as Puerto Rico, Guyana, and the Bahamas. It was estimated in 2004 that up to 2.5 million Jamaicans and Jamaican descendants live abroad. Jamaicans in the United Kingdom number an estimated 800,000, making them by far the country's largest African Caribbean group. Large scale migration from Jamaica to the UK occurred primarily in the 1950s and 1960s when the country was still under British rule. Jamaican communities exist in most large UK cities. Concentrations of expatriate Jamaicans are quite considerable in numerous cities in the United States, including New York City, Buffalo, the Miami metro area, Atlanta, Chicago, Orlando, Tampa, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Hartford, Providence and Los Angeles. In Canada, the Jamaican population is centered in Toronto, and there are smaller communities in cities such as Hamilton, Montreal, Winnipeg, Vancouver and Ottawa. Topic. Crime When Jamaica gained independence in 1962, the murder rate was 3.9 per 100,000 inhabitants, one of the lowest in the world. By 2009, the rate was 62 per 100,000 inhabitants, one of the highest in the world. Jamaica has had one of the highest murder rates in the world for many years, according to UN estimates. Some areas of Jamaica, particularly cities such as Kingston, experience high levels of crime and violence. Some Jamaicans are hostile towards LGBT and intersex people, and there have been reported cases of mob attacks against gay people. Male homosexuality is illegal and punishable by prison time although it is not enforced, however, there were 1,682 reported murders in 2009 and 1,428 in 2010. Since 2011 the murder rate continued to fall following the downward trend in 2010 after a strategic program was launched. In 2012, the Ministry of National Security reported a 30% decrease in murders. Nevertheless, in 2017 murders rose by 22% over the previous year. Topic: Major cities. Topic: Religion. Christianity is the largest religion practiced in Jamaica. Protestants form the majority of approximately 70% in the country, and Roman Catholics are a minority with 2% of the population. According to the 2001 census, the country's largest Protestant denominations are the Church of God 24%, Seventh-day Adventist Church 11%, Pentecostal 10%, Baptist 7%, Anglican 4%, United Church 2%, Methodist 2%, Moravian 1%, and Plymouth Brethren 1%. The Christian faith gained acceptance as British Christian abolitionists and Baptist missionaries joined educated former former slaves in the struggle against slavery the rastafari movement has 29026 adherents according to the 2011 census with 25325 rastafarian males and 3701 rastafarian females other religions in Jamaica include Jehovah's Witnesses 2% population, the Baha'i Faith, which counts perhaps 8,000 adherents and 21 local spiritual assemblies, Buddhism, and Hinduism. The Hindu Diwali festival is celebrated yearly among the Indo-Jamaican community. There is also a small population of Jews, about 200, who describe themselves as liberal conservative. The first Jews in Jamaica trace their roots back to early 15th century Spain and Portugal. Kahal Kadosh Share Shalom, also known as the United Congregation of Israelites, is a historic synagogue located in the city of Kingston. Originally built in 1912, it is the official and only Jewish place of worship left on the island. 
The once abundant Jewish population has voluntarily converted to Christianity over time. Sharei Shalom is one of the few synagogues in the world that contains sand covered floors and is a popular tourist destination. On March 23, 2002, Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan visited Sharei Shalom, his first visit to a synagogue, in an attempt to repair his controversial relationship with the Jewish community. Farrakhan was accepted to speak at Sharei Shalom in the native country of his father, after being rejected to appear at American synagogues, many of whom had fear of sending the wrong signal to the Jewish community. Other small groups include Muslims, who claim 5,000 adherents. The Muslim holidays of Ashura, known locally as Hussein or Husay and Eid, have been celebrated throughout the island for hundreds of years. In the past, every plantation in each parish celebrated Husay. Today it has been called an Indian carnival and is perhaps most well known in Clarendon where it is celebrated each August. People of all religions attend the event, showing mutual respect. There is also a small community of Mormons. Culture Topic. Music Though a small nation, Jamaican culture has a strong global presence. The musical genres reggae, ska, mento, rocksteady, dub, and, more recently, dancehall and raga all originated in the island's vibrant, popular urban recording industry. Jamaica also played an important role in the development of punk rock, through reggae and ska. Reggae has also influenced American rap music, as they share roots as rhythmic, African styles of music. Some rappers, such as the notorious B.I.G., Busta Rhymes, and Heavy D., are of Jamaican descent. Internationally known reggae musician Bob Marley was also Jamaican. Many other internationally known artists were born in Jamaica, including Millie Small, Lee, Scratch. Perry, Gregory Isaacs, Half Pint, Protégé, Peter Tosh, Bunny Whaler, Big Youth, Jimmy Cliff, Dennis Brown, Desmond Decker, Barris Hammond, Beanie Man, Shaggy, Grace Jones, Shaba Ranks, Super Cat, Buju Banton, Sean Paul, I Wayne, Bounty Killer and many others. Bands that came from Jamaica include Black Uhuru, Third World Band, Inner Circle, Chalice Reggae Band, Culture, Fab Five and Morgan Heritage. The genre jungle emerged from London's Jamaican diaspora. The birth of hip-hop in New York City owed much to the city's Jamaican community. <laughs> <laughs> Literature The journalist and author H. G. De Lisser (1878–1944) used his native country as the setting for his many novels. Born in Falmouth, Jamaica, DeLisser worked as a reporter for the Jamaica Times at a young age and in 1920 began publishing the magazine Planter's Punch. The White Witch of Rosehall is one of his better-known novels. He was named honorary president of the Jamaican Press Association. He worked throughout his professional career to promote the Jamaican sugar industry. Roger Mays (1905–1955), a journalist, poet, and playwright, wrote many short stories, plays, and novels, including *The Hills Were Joyful Together* (1953), *Brother Man* (1954), and *Black Lightning* (1955). Ian Fleming (1908–1964), who had a home in Jamaica where he spent considerable time, repeatedly used the island as a setting in his James Bond novels, including *Live and Let Die*, *Doctor No*, *For Your Eyes Only*, *The Man with the Golden Gun*, *An Octopussy*, and *The Living Daylights*. In addition, James Bond uses a Jamaica-based cover in *Casino Royale*. So far, the only James Bond film adaptation to have been set in Jamaica is Dr. No filming for the fictional island of San Monique in Live and Let Die took place in Jamaica. Marlon James 1970, novelist has published three novels, John Crow's Devil 2005, The Book of Night Women 2009, and A Brief History of Seven Killings 2014, winner of the 2015 Man Booker Prize.
Topic: Film. The cinema actor Errol Flynn lived with his third wife Patrice Wymore in Port Antonio in the 1950s. He helped develop tourism to this area, popularizing trips down rivers on bamboo rafts. Jamaica has a history in the film industry dating from the early 1960s. A look at delinquent youth in Jamaica is presented in the 1970s musical crime film The Harder They Come, starring Jimmy Cliff as a frustrated and psychopathic reggae musician who descends into a murderous crime spree. The American film Cocktail 1988, starring Tom Cruise, is one of the more popular films to depict Jamaica. Another popular Jamaican-based film is the 1993 Disney comedy Cool Runnings, which is loosely based on the true story of Jamaica's first bobsled team trying to make it in the Winter Olympics. Topic. Cuisine The island is famous for its Jamaican jerk spice, curries and rice and peas which is integral to Jamaican cuisine. Jamaica is also home to Red Stripe Beer and Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee. Topic. National symbols From the Jamaica Information Service National Bird, Red-Billed Streamertail also called Dr. Bird a hummingbird, Trichillus polytmus National Flower, Lignum vitae, Gaiacum officinale National Tree, Blue Maho, Hibiscus taliparatia latum. National Fruit, Aki, Blaya sapida. National Motto, Out of Many, One People. Topic: Sport. Sport is an integral part of national life in Jamaica and the island's athletes tend to perform to a standard well above what might ordinarily be expected of such a small country. While the most popular local sport is cricket, on the international stage Jamaicans have tended to do particularly well at track and field athletics. Jamaica has produced some of the world's most famous cricketers, including George Headley, Courtney Walsh, and Michael Holding. The country was one of the venues of 2007 Cricket World Cup and the West Indies cricket team is one of 10 ICC full member teams that participate in international test cricket. The Jamaica national cricket team competes regionally, and also provides players for the West Indies team. Sabina Park is the only test venue in the island, but the Greenfield Stadium is also used for cricket. Chris Gale is the most renowned batsman from Jamaica currently representing the West Indies cricket team. Since independence Jamaica has consistently produced world-class athletes in track and field. In Jamaica involvement in athletics begins at a very young age and most high schools maintain rigorous athletics programs with their top athletes competing in national competitions most notably the VMBS Girls and Boys Athletics Championships and international meets most notably the Penn Relays. In Jamaica it is not uncommon for young athletes to attain press coverage and national fame long before they arrive on the international athletics stage. Over the past six decades Jamaica has produced dozens of world-class sprinters including Olympic and world champion Usain Bolt, world record holder in the 100 meters for men at 9.58 s, and 200 meters for men at 19.19 s. Other noteworthy Jamaican sprinters include Arthur Wint, the first Jamaican Olympic gold medalist, Donald Quarry, Elaine Thompson double Olympic champion from Rio 2016 in the 100m and 200m, Olympic champion and former 200m world record holder, Roy Anthony Bridge, part of the International Olympic Committee, Merlene Otte, Delarine Ennis London, Shelley Ann Fraser Price, the former world and two-time Olympic 100m champion, Karen 
Karen Stewart, Aline Bailey, Juliet Cuthbert, three-time Olympic gold medalist, Veronica Campbell-Brown, Sharon Simpson, Bridget Foster Hilton, Johan Blake, Herb McKenley, George Roden, Olympic gold medalist, Dion Hemmings, Olympic gold medalist, as well as Asafa Powell, former 100 m world record holder and 2 by 100 m Olympic finalist and gold medal winner in the men's 2008 Olympic 4 times 100 m Jamaica has also produced several world-class amateur and professional boxers including Trevor Burbick and Mike McCallum. First-generation Jamaican athletes have continued to make a significant impact on the sport internationally, especially in the United Kingdom where the list of top British boxers born in Jamaica or of Jamaican parents includes Lloyd Honeygon, Chris Eubank, Audley Harrison, David Hay, Lennox Lewis and Frank Bruno. Association football and horse racing are other popular sports in Jamaica. The national football team qualified for the 1998 FIFA World Cup. The Jamaica national bobsled team was once a serious contender in the Winter Olympics, beating many well-established teams. Chess and basketball are widely played in Jamaica and are supported by the Jamaica Chess Federation JCF and the Jamaica Basketball Federation JBF, respectively. Netball is also very popular on the island, with the Jamaica national netball team called the Sunshine Girls consistently ranking in the top five in the world. Rugby league has been played in Jamaica since 2006. The Jamaica National Rugby League team is made up of players who play in Jamaica and from UK-based professional and semi-professional clubs notably in the Super League and Championship. In November 2018 for the first time ever, the Jamaican Rugby League team qualified for the Rugby League World Cup after defeating the USA and Canada. Jamaica will play in the 2021 Rugby League World Cup in England, according to ESPN. The highest paid Jamaican professional athlete in 2011 was Justin Masterson, starting pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Education. The emancipation of the slaves heralded in the establishment of the Jamaican education system for the masses. Prior to emancipation there were few schools for educating locals. Many sent their children off to England to access quality education. After emancipation the West Indian Commission granted a sum of money to establish elementary schools, now known as all-age schools. Most of these schools were established by the churches. This was the genesis of the modern Jamaican school system. Presently the following categories of schools exist. Early childhood, basic, infant and privately operated preschool. Age cohort, 2 to 5 years. Primary, publicly and privately owned, privately owned being called preparatory schools. Ages 3 to 12 years. Secondary, publicly and privately owned. Ages 10 to 19 years. The high schools in Jamaica may be either single sex or coeducational institutions, and many schools follow the traditional English grammar school model used throughout the British West Indies. Tertiary, community colleges, teachers' colleges, with the Myco Teachers College now the Myco University College being the oldest, founded in 1836, the Shortwood Teachers College which was once an all-female teacher training institution, vocational training centers, colleges and universities, publicly and privately owned. There are five local universities, the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, the University of Technology, Jamaica, formerly the College of Art Science and Technology, CAST, the Northern Caribbean University, formerly West Indies College, the University College of the Caribbean, and the International University of the Caribbean. Additionally, there are many community and teacher training colleges. Education is free from the early childhood to secondary levels. There are also opportunities for those who cannot afford further education in the vocational arena, through the Human Employment and Resource Training National Training Agency Heart Trust NTA program, which is open to all working-age national population and through an extensive scholarship network for the various universities. 
Students are taught Spanish in school from the primary level upwards. About 40 to 45 percent of educated people in Jamaica knows some form of Spanish. Topic: Economy. Jamaica is a mixed economy with both state enterprises and private sector businesses. Major sectors of the Jamaican economy include agriculture, mining, manufacturing, tourism, and financial and insurance services. Tourism and mining are the leading earners of foreign exchange. Half the Jamaican economy relies on services, with half of its income coming from services such as tourism. An estimated 1.3 million foreign tourists visit Jamaica every year. Supported by multilateral financial institutions, Jamaica has, since the early 1980s, sought to implement structural reforms aimed at fostering private sector activity and increasing the role of market forces in resource allocation. Since 1991, the government has followed a program of economic liberalization and stabilization by removing exchange controls, floating the exchange rate, cutting tariffs, stabilizing the Jamaican currency, reducing inflation and removing restrictions on foreign investment. Emphasis has been placed on maintaining strict fiscal discipline, greater openness to trade and financial flows, market liberalization and reduction in the size of government. During this period, a large share of the economy was returned to private sector ownership through divestment and privatization programs. The Macroeconomic Stabilization Program introduced in 1991, which focused on tight fiscal and monetary policies, has contributed to a controlled reduction in the rate of inflation. The annual inflation rate decreased from a high of 80.2% in 1991 to 7.9% 7 in 1998. Inflation for FY 1998-99 was 6.2% compared to 7.2% in the corresponding period in CUU 1997-98. The government of Jamaica remains committed to lowering inflation, with a long-term objective of bringing it in line with that of its major trading partners. After a period of steady growth from 1985 to 1995, real GDP decreased by 1.8% and 2.4% in 1996 and 1997, respectively. The decrease in GDP in 1996 and 1997 was largely due to significant problems in the financial sector and, in 1997, a severe island-wide drought the worst in 70 years that drastically reduced agricultural production. In 1997, nominal GDP was approximately $220,556.2 million $6,198.9 million based on the average annual exchange rate of the period. The economy in 1997 was marked by low levels of import growth, high levels of private capital inflows and relative stability in the foreign exchange market. Recent economic performance shows the Jamaican economy is recovering. Agricultural production, an important engine of growth increased 15.3% in third quarter of 1998 compared to the corresponding period in 1997, signaling the first positive growth rate in the sector since January 1997. Bauxite and alumina production increased 5.5% from January to December 1998, compared to the corresponding period in 1997. January's bauxite production recorded a 7.1% increase relative to January 1998 and continued expansion of alumina production through 2009 is planned by Alcoa. Jamaica is the fifth largest exporter of bauxite in the world, after Australia, China, Brazil and Guinea. Tourism, which is the largest foreign exchange earner, showed improvement as well. In the third quarter of 1998, growth in tourist arrivals accelerated with an overall increase of 8.5% in tourism earnings in 1998 when compared to the corresponding period in 1997. Jamaica's agricultural exports are sugar, bananas, coffee, rum, and yams. Jamaica has a wide variety of industrial and commercial activities. 
The aviation industry is able to perform most routine aircraft maintenance, except for heavy structural repairs. There is a considerable amount of technical support for transport and agricultural aviation. Jamaica has a considerable amount of industrial engineering, light manufacturing, including metal fabrication, metal roofing, and furniture manufacturing. Food and beverage processing, glassware manufacturing, software and data processing, printing and publishing, insurance underwriting, music and recording, and advanced education activities can be found in the larger urban areas. The Jamaican construction industry is entirely self-sufficient, with professional technical standards and guidance. Since the first quarter of 2006, the economy of Jamaica has undergone a period of staunch growth. With inflation for the 2006 calendar year down to 6.0% and unemployment down to 8.9%, the nominal GDP grew by an unprecedented 2.9%. An investment program in island transportation and utility infrastructure and gains in the tourism, mining, and service sectors all contributed this figure. All projections for 2007 show an even higher potential for economic growth with all estimates over 3.0% and hampered only by urban crime and public policies. In 2006, Jamaica became part of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy CSME as one of the pioneering members. The global economic downturn had a significant impact on the Jamaican economy for the years 2007 to 2009, resulting in negative economic growth. The government implemented a new debt management initiative, the Jamaica Debt Exchange JDX, on 14 January 2010. The initiative would see holders of Government of Jamaica GOJ bonds returning the high interest earning instruments for bonds with lower yields and longer maturities. The offer was taken up by over 95% of local financial institutions and was deemed a success by the government. Owing to the success of the JDX program, the Bruce Golding-led government was successful in entering into a borrowing arrangement with the IMF on 4 February 2010 for the amount of $1.27 billion. The loan agreement is for a period of three years. In April 2014, the governments of Jamaica and China signed the preliminary agreements for the first phase of the Jamaican Logistics Hub (JLH), the initiative that aims to position Kingston as the fourth node in the global logistics chain, joining Rotterdam, Dubai, and Singapore, and serving the Americas. The project, when completed, is expected to provide many jobs for Jamaicans, economic zones for multinational companies and much-needed economic growth to alleviate the country's heavy debt-to-GDP ratio. Strict adherence to the IMF's refinancing program and preparations for the JLH has favorably affected Jamaica's credit rating and outlook from the three biggest rating agencies. Topic. Infrastructure Topic. Transport The transport infrastructure in Jamaica consists of roadways, railways and air transport, with roadways forming the backbone of the island's internal transport system. Topic. Roadways The Jamaican road network consists of almost 21,000 kilometers 13,000 miles of roads, of which over 15,000 kilometers 9,300 miles is paved. The Jamaican government has, since the late 1990s and in cooperation with private investors, embarked on a campaign of infrastructural improvement projects, one of which includes the creation of a system of freeways, the first such access-controlled roadways of their kind on the island, connecting the main population centers of the island. This project has so far seen the completion of 33 kilometers 21 miles of freeway. Topic. Railways Railways in Jamaica no longer enjoy the prominent position they once did, having been largely replaced by roadways as the primary means of transport. 
Of the 272 kilometers, 169 miles of railway found in Jamaica, only 57 kilometers, 35 miles remain in operation, currently used to transport bauxite. On the 13th of April 2011, limited passenger service was resumed between May Penn, Spanish Town and Linstead. Topic: Air transport. There are three international airports in Jamaica with modern terminals, long runways, and the navigational equipment required to accommodate the large jet aircraft used in modern and air travel, Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston, Ian Fleming International Airport in Boscobel, St. Mary Parish, and the island's largest and busiest airport, Sir Donald Sangster International Airport in the resort city of Montego Bay. Manly and Sangster International Airports are home to the country's national airline, Air Jamaica. In addition there are local commuter airports at Tinson Penn, Kingston, Port Antonio, and Negril, which cater to internal flights only. Many other small, rural centers are served by private fields on sugar estates or bauxite mines. Topic. Ports, shipping and lighthouses Owing to its location in the Caribbean Sea in the shipping lane to the Panama Canal and relative proximity to large markets in North America and emerging markets in Latin America, Jamaica receives high container traffic. The container terminal at the port of Kingston has undergone large expansion in capacity in recent years to handle growth both already realized as well as that which is projected in coming years. Montego Freeport in Montego Bay also handles a variety of cargo like though more limited than the port of Kingston, mainly agricultural products. There are several other ports positioned around the island, including Port Esquivel in St. Catherine w -I -N -D -A -L -C -O, Rocky Point in Clarendon, Port Kaiser in St. Elizabeth, Port Rhodes in Discovery Bay, Reynolds Pier in Ocho Rios, and Boundbrook Port in Port Antonio. To aid the navigation of shipping, Jamaica operates nine lighthouses. Topic. Energy Jamaica depends on petroleum imports to satisfy its national energy needs. Many test sites have been explored for oil, but no commercially viable quantities have been found. The most convenient sources of imported oil and motor fuels diesel, gasoline, and jet fuel are from Mexico and Venezuela. Jamaica's electrical power is produced by diesel bunker oil generators located in Old Harbor. Other smaller power stations most owned by the Jamaica Public Service Company, the island's electricity provider support the island's electrical grid including the Hunts Bay Power Station, the Bogue Power Station, the Rockfort Power Station and small hydroelectric plants on the White River, Rio Bueno, Morant River, Black River Magadi, and Roaring River. A wind farm, owned by the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, was established at Wigton, Manchester. Jamaica has successfully operated a Slowpoke II nuclear reactor of 20 kW capacity since the early 1980s, but there are no plans to expand nuclear power at present. Jamaica imports approximately 80,000 barrels cubic meters of oil energy products per day, including asphalt and lubrication products. Just 20% of imported fuels are used for road transportation, the rest being used by the bauxite industry, electricity generation, and aviation. 30,000 barrels per day of crude imports are processed into various motor fuels and asphalt by the Petrojam refinery in Kingston. Jamaica produces enormous quantities of drinking alcohol, at least 5% water content, most of which appears to be consumed as beverages, and none used as motor fuel. Facilities exist to refine hydrous ethanol feedstock into anhydrous ethanol 0% water content, but as of 2007, the process appeared to be uneconomic and the production plant was idle. Communication 
Jamaica has a fully digital telephone communication system with a mobile penetration of over 95%. The country's two mobile operators, Flow Jamaica, formerly Lime, B Mobile and Cable and Wireless Jamaica, and Digicel Jamaica have spent millions in network upgrades and expansion. The newest operator, Digicel was granted a license in 2001 to operate mobile services in the newly liberalized telecom market that had once been the sole domain of the incumbent flow then cable and wireless Jamaica monopoly. Digicel opted for the more widely used GSM wireless system, while a past operator, Oceanic which became Claro Jamaica and later merged with Digicel Jamaica in 2011 opted for the CDMA standard. Flow formerly Lime pre-Columbus Communications merger which had begun with TDMA standard subsequently upgraded to GSM in 2002 decommissioned TDMA in 2006 and only utilized that standard until 2009 when Lime launched its 3G network both operators currently provide islandwide coverage with HSPA+ 3G technology Currently, only Digicel offers LTE to its customers whereas Flow Jamaica has committed to launching LTE in the cities of Kingston and Montego Bay, places where Digicel's LTE network is currently only found in, in short order. A new entrant to the Jamaican communications market, Flow Jamaica, laid a new submarine cable connecting Jamaica to the United States. This new cable increases the total number of submarine cables connecting Jamaica to the rest of the world to four. Cable and Wireless Communications parent company of Lime acquired the company in late 2014 and replaced their brand Lime with Flow. Flow Jamaica currently has the most broadband and cable subscribers on the island and also has 1 million mobile subscribers, second to Digicel, which had, at its peak, over 2 million mobile subscriptions on its network. Digicel entered the broadband market in 2010 by offering WiMAX broadband, capable of up to 6 megabits per second per subscriber. To further their broadband share post Lime Flow merger in 2014, the company introduced a new broadband service called Digicel Play, which is Jamaica's second FTTH offering after LIME's deployment in selected communities in 2011. It is currently only available in the parishes of Kingston, Portmore, and St. Andrew. It offers speeds of up to 200 megabits per second down, 100 megabits per second up via a pure fiber optic network. Digicel's competitor, Flow Jamaica, has a network consisting of ADSL, coaxial and fiber to the home inherited from Lime and only offers speeds up to 100 megabits per second. Flow has committed to expanding its fiber offering to more areas in order to combat Digicel's entrance into the market. It was announced that the Office and Utilities Regulations are, Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining MSTEM, and the Spectrum Management Authority SMA, have given approval for another mobile operator license in January 2016. The identity of this entrant was ascertained on May 20, 2016, when the Jamaican government named the new carrier as Symbiote Investments Limited operating under the name Caricel. The company will focus on 4G LTE data offerings and will first go live in the Kingston metropolitan area and will expand to the rest of Jamaica thereafter. Topic. See also Index of Jamaica-related articles Outline of Jamaica